What's up, live? Check in, check in. Everybody, just like always, you know, this is how we start off all of our live streams, giving you guys just a few moments uh, to get the YouTube notification and check in. Um, so if you're watching this after the fact, that is why we're going to do this slight delay before we get into it. Shout out Milkman Trucker being the first one in the comment section. Appreciate you here. Also, uh, not going to talk a lot about it, but did want to shout this out in the video. Shout out Dr. Simone Holligan for this. Um, if you want to know more about it, it is on my Instagram live stream. Uh, might still be there when you see this. But um, just wanted to recognize her for what she did. Again, if you want details on that, um, you know, check it out. Uh, on my Instagram, JTS is on Instagram. So in this video, you guys already know what we're talking about. You've seen the title of the video, uh, making $500 in an hour with your appliance repair business. So uh, if you're brand new uh, to this, how we usually structure this is we go through the information and then any questions that you guys have, uh, put them in the chat. We will answer them at the end because we might answer your question as we're going through this whole process. Um, now, what we're doing is different than what you'll be learning on the training. Again, uh, if you come to Appliance Repair Boot Camp, uh, you will get the hands-on uh, experience and the information needed to create a six-figure appliance repair business. But um, what we're doing today is like a little bit above that. And I'm going to let Mike explain it because he can explain it better than me. Okay. Uh, what we're going to be doing today, we're going to actually be uh, changing a compressor on a refrigerator. And we're going into something, what they call the seal system. Uh, most uh, most homeowners, if you got, they have a problem within their sales system, uh, they're not going to opt for the repair um, because the repairs to go into the sales system be five hundred dollars and more uh, to go up in there, and uh, you got to have specialized equipment, and you also have to have an EPA certification uh, to actually buy the Freon and to actually recover the Freon. So, uh, and these are, and, and whenever you run into a house that have a sales system problem. Most of the time, the homeowner is going to opt out to just go ahead and get a new refrigerator. But the reason why I'm doing this one, I got two of them I got to do. Um, I got one I'm already done with, uh, but I got to have something for the class. So <laughs> I got to have a high-end refrigerator for the class to be able to work on and actually do the diagnostics on it. So what I've done, I got a refrigerator that uh, has a bad compressor, and I'm just going to uh, fix the compressor so we'll have something to actually use during the classroom. All right, cool. So again, you guys, everything that you're going to come out and learn and the training is everything you need to know to make six figures. But I wanted to share this with you guys. For those of you that come out to the training and then want to go a step beyond that and get uh, the free on certification and want to do these uh, sorts of jobs as well. Uh, the goal of this channel is just to expose you guys to as much of entrepreneurial things as possible. Um if that makes sense. Also, um, one more announcement I want to make, and then we're going to get into the actual practical side of it, is for those of you who have questions about starting an investment group, anything related to an investment group, I will be live streaming the next meeting of uh, Mike Sneed's investment group. Um, and again, it'll be April the 8th. Yeah, yeah. April the 8th, I will live stream it. If you or anybody you know wants to see it, tune in April the 8th. Save the date. Uh, if you want to meet up with the people that you're thinking about being in an investment group with, whether it's family members or friends, you all get together and watch that live stream. Any questions you have, that'll be the time to get all of your answers. All right. So without further ado, uh, Mike, let's get into it. Okay. Any right. questions you have about any of this, um, let me know. Oh, also, Mike, um, can we talk about the pricing? Before okay. We... Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, um, go ahead. How how much? Oh, excuse me. How much uh, are you going to make off of this job? Well, how much uh, uh, is it going to cost the customer? Uh, this one right here for a customer would be nine hundred and fifty dollars for we're charged to do this uh, repair. Okay, and and uh, it's different than the five hundred dollars in the title because Mike actually had to go uh, get this. Uh, refrigerator and then he's going to actually take it back as well but um he didn't even have to go five miles up the road so to go less than five miles up the road and bring it back is an additional four hundred dollars and some change uh to do this repair so if it came here like if you guys decide to get to this level and bring it to your shop it's still a five hundred dollar repair and we're basing that off of the blue book uh for the those of you that are brand new and this is your first live stream mike can you tell them oh uh, why do you use a blue book? Uh, the where do numbers come from? The appliance blue book. That's a, a, a nationwide standard for all of, uh, all appliance repairs. So that way, when you are a new technician or you're a new business owner, and you're out in front of a customer and you need to actually uh, give them a price. The uh, one of the hardest things for new people going into business is asking for the money. 
because people think that they're asking for the money. So if you put the book out there and you show them the price in the book, it, it takes the um, it takes the onus off of you saying I'm giving you this price, and you are showing them, hey, this is the national um, price guide, and this is what they say this price right here should cost. And you, it makes the cost, it makes the technician feel more comfortable asking for the money. And okay. then they don't. Then if they get mad, they're not mad at you. They're mad at the book. So. Okay. And this is what uh, one looks like. But they are available online now. It's all in alph alphabetical order. I'm gonna read it to you guys in case you can't see it. But for this one, we just went to the refrigeration, uh, refrigerator section, which is all marked right here in the top corner. This is a Samsung refrigerator. And then to fix the compressor, uh, I'm going to try and get it close, but I'll also read it to you. Uh, the prices is, is there is $551.23. So this is a $551.23 uh, repair. Mike, um, do you mind sharing how much is the part? Um, if you're going to do a compressor, they're going to pay cash for it. Uh, it'll be somewhere between $80, $90 for that compressor. You might be able to find a uh, find an aftermarket one a little cheaper. Um, this right here is actually for a warranty company. So the warranty company, they actually uh they got the compressor probably free. Um and they just uh they just changing the compressor and say let it uh and, and put it back out there. So uh you know, so they they're just really paying for the labor. Okay. Um, All right. But uh, ordinarily, like I was telling JT, the reason why I don't teach this is because of the price. This is $950. And this refrigerator at brand new, when it was brand new, was no more than about $1,500. So what we normally say, if the cost of the repair is more than half the price of a new refrigerator or a new appliance, then don't do the repair. So if we went to a customer house and they had a, a, a bad compressor, we would tell them, nah, don't do the repair. Uh, it's not worth it. Um, this this homeowner right here, the refrigerator is probably uh, is probably uh, fitting right into a, a, a specific type of cabinet she got or or she got something else that she wants to uh, put into. There's something going on while she while she's forcing them to fix her refrigerator. Or sometimes the homeowner, um, when the warranty company goes out and offer them a certain amount of money for the repair, um, the homeowner doesn't think it's the correct amount they should get for their refrigerator. So they'll tell the own warranty company, just go ahead and repair it and, uh, and force them to repair it instead of taking the cash out. I'm almost positive they offer her a cash out, but she figures she's not going to pay anything. I want my refrigerator fixed. Cool, cool. And uh, I saw one question. Again, if you have any questions, put it in the chat. Appreciate all 37 people that's here right now. Hit that thumbs up button. I want to see where you watching this video from and any questions that you have throughout this whole process. Put them in the chat. And then at the end, any unanswered questions about anything regarding this business, you guys always know we'll get to that. I've put in the chat the link if you want to go to the event. I did see a couple of questions about where the event is located and uh, how many spots we have available. So if you click that link that's in the chat, you can go register for the event right now as we're doing this video. But uh, anything else you want to cover before we get into this? Uh, that's it. That's it. Uh, we actually have a cameraman today. So, uh, if I can, Mike, catch you pretty good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, so the first thing we got to do, um, we're going to take the back top off so we can get you with the compressor and that. Mike, can, you, can we go through tools first? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, no just, problem. yeah, just for the sake of people knowing what it takes to, okay. to, to fix a compressor. All right. Let me uh, have let me something grab. else on this. Let me grab it. All right. One second. Shout out everybody in the chat right now while Mike goes grab that. BK from the Rockies. What's good, fam? Appreciate you being here. Marcus the Great. Salute. Appreciate you being here. Okay. okay. All right. All right. So uh, this is another reason why I tell people when they're first getting started not to do seal system repairs, because you're going to have to have a brazen torch. You're going to have to have nitrogen tank. You're going to have to have a vacuum pump. You see this? So you got to have a vacuum pump. You pan it down a little bit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You got to have a vacuum pump. Uh, you're going to have to have a recovery unit. And you're going to have to have a recovery tank. You're going to have to have uh, refrigeration gauges. Hold it down a little bit lower, Mike. They got that yep. refrigeration gauges. Yep. So just to get started to do a seal system repair, uh, if you're not gonna and, and just to get started, it's gonna cost you uh, probably a thousand dollars or more just to get the equipment. And then once you get the equipment, you're not gonna have a lot of people actually doing the repair. So you go out and spend a couple of thousand dollars to get this equipment, and then most of the time, most of the homeowners gonna opt out not to do the repair. So it's not worth it. And like I said, uh, very few of your repairs is going to actually be sealed system. Most of the time, it's going to be the simple stuff: evaporator fans, defrost timers, uh, control boards, and uh, defrost heaters. So uh, I would say stay away from this uh, and just stick to the to the money makers. 
All right. But for those of you that want to be advanced, we're about to get into it. So my, I'm going to ask you a ton of questions okay. uh, for the benefit of me and for the benefit of anybody that's watching. All right. Go ahead. So, yeah. So step one, I'm just simple, just taking off this panel. Right. Just held on with screws. Somebody put a, a thumbs up in the chat if you guys can see everything pretty good. If you guys need a better angle, uh, put a thumbs up in the chat. Let me know that you guys can see it real well. And again, if you have any questions about anything, put it in the chat. We will cover it. So uh, what are we looking at, Mike? So what, what is a compressor? Uh, uh, this right here is what we call our compressor. Can we? Uh, I'm, a, I'm actually closer. Yeah. Uh, yes. This is the compressor right here. This right here is what we call our condenser coils. Um, this right here is what we call our water inlet valve for the ice maker and water water valve. Okay. All right. So what we're going to be working with, we're going to be working with the compressor right here. Um, the problem that we're having this compressor is actually locked, meaning uh, when they try to turn it on, it just sits there at home, like your engine and your car is locked up. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we got to do, we got to actually take it out and put a new one in. And if you look right here, they have like it's brazed in, kind of like what we call welded in. So we got to cut these lines and actually re-weld uh, the new ones in. But before we do that, we got to recover the Freon. When I first got into this business, uh, you didn't have to do this section. You could just actually cut the lines and let the gas go everywhere. But now they require you to actually recover the lines because they said it depletes the ozone layer. All right. So with, ho with household refrigerators, unlike uh, uh, your heat and air conditioning unit at your house, they don't give you actual valves or, or, or tap valves to actually get the Freon out. As you see, I have to put what we call uh, a line tap. Uh, you just uh, screw this on. Can, uh, can we hold it closer to the camera, Mike? Just hold the tool closer to the camera so they can see what we use. All right. right. Yeah. Um, this is an Allen wrench. Cool. And this right here, you see you got three bolts. And you just clamp this on. And I just screw this on here. And uh, all that, just screwed it on tight. What happened, it clamps to this line. And what I'm going to do here now, I'm going to put my gauges on here. And I'm going to actually screw down this screw right here. And this screw has a little pin in it that's going to stick a hole into this line and let the gas come out here. And then we're going to recover it here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up. All right. Again, while Mike is setting that up, somebody put in the chat. Let me know if you guys can see it. Put a thumbs up if you can see it pretty good. Put a thumbs down if you can't see it because um, that'll be easier than uh, trying to actually read messages. So uh, if you guys think that it's fine, let me know. Thumbs up, thumbs down. All right, so uh, okay, so what's gonna happen? Uh, when I screw this down right here, I'm gonna put a hole in it, and it's gonna let gas come here. The gas is gonna come up here. Closer. The gas is gonna come through this line, gonna come out the refrigerator, come out this line, come right here to this this gauge right here. Um, and this is what we call our low side. I'm gonna connect this to our recovery unit. So connected that to our uh, recovery unit, and what it's gonna do? It's gonna come out of here. I'm gonna. It's gonna come here. This gauge. I'm gonna open this gauge up. It's gonna come here. When it comes here, this right here is gonna act like the. It has a compressor in it, just like that. So it's gonna actually act like that refrigerator and suck the freon out of here, push it here, and push it into this tank. Yeah. So we take it. And we're gonna push it, push it into this tank right here. And uh, what I want to do. I want to monitor the pressure on this tank also. So I'm going to take my other gauge and put it right here on this tank. Shout out all 42 people that's in the chat right now. Hit that thumbs up button. Any questions that you have, if you're just checking in, it's fine. This is more of an advanced training for anybody that wants appliance repair. Just to show you uh, if you want to do more advanced things after you attend the training. Uh, we're going to talk through this whole process, but um, this is over a $500 repair. If they bring the unit to you, Mike had to drive a little less than five miles to go pick it up, and he also has to take it back. So this is going to be a little over a $900 repair because he has to pick it up and drop it back off. So um, you guys know I always try to give you as detailed information as possible. So uh, we're going to run through this and then get to any questions that you guys have. Yeah. 
Now, uh, I, I turned this down to put a hole in it. Now I'm going to open it up. Okay. You hear the freedom coming out? Yeah, we can hear it. I don't know if they'll be able hey, to hear it. You can look at the gauges, too. If you look right here, as my pressure goes up, you can see there's actually uh, pulling freon out. And you can see my gauge is going up and it's actually going into this tank. Um, it's not but a couple of ounces of freon in a refrigerator, not much like your heating and air conditioning unit. Uh, with a heating and air conditioning unit, you will use a scale to actually weigh it because you have several pounds. Here, you only got a couple of ounces, uh, just like a little small can you have in your car for uh, that you charge your car up. And I'm just gonna let it run for a little while to get all the gas out. All right. I'm gonna check in on the chat again because okay. a lot uh some of this might be a little bit more weight than anything else. Yeah. So it is. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna run through the questions as we do it, but also cover some um at the end as well. Uh shout out Jay Rivera, W. Stevens, Lance from Boston, uh good day, Olive from Miss Alpha Omega God, uh true TSDOA grind hard. L Boogie says hello all. I got my universal uh, certificate. Is that what you said you need that yeah, to be able to do this? Yeah, if he got universal certificate, he can, he can, he can uh, recover and, and do this right here. Okay, so uh, to the gentleman that has uh, his universal certificate, or uh, I'm assuming, but if it was a female, and again, no disrespect, <laughs> uh, if you don't have a profile picture, I just assume. Um, I hope they teach ethics. Uh, teach ethics where? Uh, when and where is the training? Again, the link. Uh, that I put in the chat, you can click the link. You can go and schedule the remaining uh, seats that are left in the training. First training next month is already sold out. Uh, the second training in June is almost sold out. So if you want to reserve your seat, go ahead and register, uh, purchase your seat, and you can come out to that. Again, it's a two-day event. You're going to learn everything you need to know to start your own appliance repair business or your own cell phone repair business and a lot of great information, how to diagnose problems, how to fix those problems once you diagnose them how to find a business, how to market your business, get contracts, all of that stuff that you need to know to go out and later start making money. That is what you're going to get, uh, as well as hands-on training. So it's one thing, like this video that we're doing now, you can watch my uh, fix the compressor, but if you come out, uh, again, it won't be a compressor, but you will fix a washer and dryer. You'll be able to touch it <coughs> and feel it and things of that nature. Um, when are the classes given in location? Again, yeah, the link. Link is right under your message uh, for that. Jacksonville, North Carolina in the building. A uh, shout out to Carl McCray. Yeah. Uh, Marquita Darling. Hey, from New Jersey. Shout out Jersey in the building. Manapul uh, Mini Minneapolis uh, in the building. Can't even pronounce it. Nova. Uh, Davier Mosby. Uh, we got Seattle, Washington uh, in the building. Fly Rebel TV. Let's run through it. Appreciate y'all. Two, I am a new fan, and I tell people about you guys regularly, even on the radio here in the DMV area. Appreciate that. Wow, that's, that. that's great. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Now, the other thing, too, when you do this, uh, you want to be in a, uh, especially uh, if you're outside doing this at somebody's house, it doesn't matter if you're outside. But if you're indoors, you want to open a door. You want to make sure you got uh, well ventilation. So yep. we got a back door back there open. So if you hear cars going in the back, that's that's all that is. Yeah. But yeah, but right now we're just waiting. Mike's just monitoring the pressure. If you just now checked in again, um, just, just showing you guys an advanced repair. Reason why I wanted to share this with you guys is because um it might take longer than an hour because I'm gonna talk through it and ask you guys these questions. But uh once you learn how to do this in an hour or less, this repair for Mike is over nine hundred dollars because he had to go. Five miles or less to go get it and bring it back. He's also gonna take it back to the customer's house with his truck. But um, but if they brought it to him, it would have been five, a little over five hundred dollars. Again, the exact numbers were at the beginning of this live stream. If you uh care to know that, um, uh, shout out Atlanta in the building. How can I get a few friends to do the work for me and start a business like that? From Jeremiah <laughs> Neesmith. Smith, you can do it. You just you pay them. You can I'll make sure your friends know what they're doing. One of, you, one of you or either your friends got to know what you're doing. But I, I definitely have people work for me. 
Uh, but yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Um, but you said you trained all your own I technicians, all right? Mine, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So somebody has to go through yeah. uh, some training, uh, learn how to do this. Um, what happened? You guys uh, blacked out for a moment. Um, let me know if you guys can see me fine right now. Um, on our end, it never blacked out, but somebody let me know if you guys can still see us okay at the moment. Um, we, p we have to pay for our own room and board for the two days. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good. Okay. Uh, I don't know what they're talking about. Um, And all I'm doing, I'm watching the game until mm -hmm. we come down to zero. Once we come to come down to like zero, I know then that uh, all the freon is out, and we're going to what we call a vacuum. So once it comes down close to zero, uh, I'll go ahead take the gauges loose and I'll cut the lines. I'm gonna do that in a couple of minutes because we're almost there. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to everybody that's in the chat right now. Appreciate all 44 people that's there. Uh, running through some questions because. It's a little bit more waiting in this one than uh action, so I'm gonna get you guys a little sooner than later. Um let me see. Shout out everybody in here. Hit that like button. Again, just running through, seeing if we have any questions here. All right, so this part is over, so we'll move on. I'll get the, I just the rest of the questions. The That's the pen that actually sticks the hole yeah. in, in there, so I just want to show you that. So all the Freon is out. So what we're going to do here now. We got to actually cut the lines and you cut the lines. You use uh, just like you uh, a plumbing tool. You just going to put this on the line and you just twist it around it. Just like you was cutting a plumbing pipe. What happens, you turn the top of it and just twist it around. And as you turn it around, it'll cut it. Mike, can you lift up your hand real quick just so they can see it? Can yeah, see it now? yeah, they can see it better now. All you're doing is just spinning it around to cut the line. And because we have what we call a metering device in here, that metering device is uh, is going to actually uh, hold some freon on, on what we call our high side. And you'll learn that in the class. You'll know all about the theory. The high and the low side, but we still have a little bit on our high side, so you might hear a little gas come out. But the government allow you to have some escape gas. And that's why you want to have it well ventilated because mm. what's going to happen when you start to uh, cut the lines and stuff, it's going to, um, you're going to have some gas escape. And you, want to, you don't want to be in a place that's closed in because it will make you sick. Mm. All right. How many lines is it, Mike, that and you got to cut? Lines. Okay. Just two lines. Just It's going to be what we call a low side and a high side. All right. And you'll learn about all of that uh, in the class, the low side and the high side. So then they just have uh they have uh four screws to hold that compressor in. So we'll come over here. Actually, pick that up. In fact, I want to go with one that's a little easier to get in there.
Couple more, Mike. While you uh, grabbing that, go ahead. Again, you just grabbing something just to remove the bolts. Yeah. I'm just cool. Cool. So remove, remove the, uh, the bolts from out here. Cool. Uh, shout out Tallahassee. We see California. We see uh, Bowie, Maryland in the building. Uh, how much is it for the two days? It's five hundred dollars for the two days. You learn how to start a six-figure appliance repair, cell phone repair business. Uh, if you missed the other live streams that we did, the alternative is uh, you can go to Ohio for, what is it, three weeks for $4,000, or you can go to a, a community college for uh, $30,000 to learn the same stuff. Um, so, again, uh, just trying to put people on game. Uh, if you want to come out, get hands-on experience and learn how to help. Yeah. Come into the class, uh, you'll get an email or two stating uh, you want to wear some comfortable clothes because this is what we're going to be doing. So, uh, wear some clothes that you don't mind uh, getting a little dirt on them and stuff. So, we're going to actually have to get down and actually do some repairs. This is going to be a hands on class. You just removing the bolts, Mike. Yep, I'm, what I'm yep. doing now, I'm just Everybody taking the that's, new that's just now checking in, just removing the bolts. I'm taking the bolts the out the compressor so we can get the compressor out. So, two lines and four bolts is all that's keeping this in there. That's it. All right. So this is why, too, you want to make, uh, make sure you have some gloves on. Because uh, you can't easily cut your hand on this stuff. Right. And if anybody has trouble seeing something and has a question about it, put it in the chat. Again, you guys know we do live streams from the laptop, not from the camera. That way, if you got any questions in real time, you can get an answer. But if you um having trouble seeing what's going on, then put it in the chat and we will address it to make sure that you understand what's going on. So... All right, can you get in there and zoom real quick before Mike gets back in there and just show them? Okay. Yeah, yeah, just show them what, what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, we're just taking these bolts out to hold the compressor down. Yeah. All I'm doing here is just a cover over top of the compressor. Um, as we saw, I call our start. Our start windings and stuff. We're just taking that off. Now you can see where the windings are actually actually starting to burn out because the compressor's sitting there trying to start. You can see where where the wires are actually getting brown on it. Mm -hmm. Can you guys see that? Uh, you guys can yep. see where it's getting brown. Yep, then they can tell better on the blue one. Yeah. He's doing that. Let me get through a couple of more. Appreciate all, everybody that's here. Hit that thumbs up button. Again, you guys know lots of times me and Mike do uh, detailed videos, uh, not only telling you guys you can do this business and how much money you can make, but um, we like to come to you guys live and actually show you somebody doing the business. So again, right now, he's just unbolting it, um, and I'm just running through the chat, making sure that there, uh, there aren't any um, questions here. Uh, I can see y'all good. Appreciate that, L Boogie. Um, where y'all located? We're in uh, 
This is Smithville or Clayton, North Carolina, because I get them confused because we like on the line. We actually on Smithville. Okay, Smithville, North Carolina at Sneed Appliance. This is where the training will be um, for those of you that come uh, to the course. And this is, you know, this is if you pan around, just show them like, yo, this is what Mike really does. Uh, has contracts, has customers, and uh, does this on a regular basis. So you actually come out. Uh, we're going to make it a school, but this is also where business really goes down on a daily basis. Um, so you're going to get real practical hands-on training for everything. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to get to do exactly what we, get to do, what we do every day. All right. How many jobs do you think you do a day, Mike? Not saying compressors, but just appliance repair jobs a day. Um, uh, uh, Each tech, right now, my techs do five per stop, five per, uh, per day. Mm -hmm. Um, And I got one, two, three. I got three techs that's running five, five stops a day. And okay. Now that uh, if we're getting into our busy se season now, um, I'll start picking up helping them out. Uh, so, so, and that's that's uh, that's not the ones we turn on, we turn down. Okay. <laughs> we, uh, we we actually turn turn people down. Okay. Um, Can somebody brand new, like somebody that comes to the course, gets hands on experience, learn how to do this? Do you think that they can go out and do uh five five jobs a day? I wouldn't recommend them first starting off doing five. Okay. Um, I would say when they first start off, maybe do maybe do two, uh, mm -hmm. maybe three. Just to get the experience up. Just to get up. the experience up and get the confidence up. And that way they don't have to be rushed. Mm -hmm. um, but then uh, you'll start to, uh, you, as you get better, you can add it in. And a good tech, she'll be able to do anywhere between seven to eight stops. Okay, so once they get a little experience going, um, seven to eight stops. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, you think they can make at least $100 a stop? Oh, good Lord, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So once they, so maybe in the beginning you making two, three hundred dollars a day, depending on your hustle, just like anything else. But then, um, after a little while, once they get their confidence up, their experience up, seven to eight hundred. Yeah. I got one screw back here. That, right. uh, that's one of the, that be a little, uh, don't want to come out for the camera. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I like for it to go live, so people can actually see how. There is running some through. stipulations somewhere. Yeah, he, he said he don't want to come out yeah. for the lives. Man. He, he got to come out. <laughs> He's yeah. just about there. Yeah, well, at least they know the video is not staged. Like, <laughs> actually yeah. doing the yeah. 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 And that's, yeah. that's one of the things I like. I like when you see it live. But then, then they want to say, well, why should you try to show me something that won't write? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say, well, I've done it live right where you can see it. Yeah. And then nobody can really say we scammed nobody. Yeah. Yep. I saw him struggling back there, sweating yeah, on that yeah. one boat. <laughs> so yeah. when you when you go out there and you get that one boat, mm -hmm. I don't want you to say, "Well, Mike Sneed said it should went right out." Yeah. Or you text me and say that boat didn't go as uh, didn't come out easy like yours. Mm -hmm. You scammed me. Yeah. But now nah, this thing, this refrigerator is about 10, 15 years old, so it's been there behind that heat, and it doesn't want to come out. It want to stay there. Okay. But he's out now. Okay, uh, what you want to do when you get ready to move the compressor out, you want to move, try to get all the lines you can out the way. Uh, these copper lines, you don't want to break them, so you want to be kind of, especially they're a little older, you want to kind of move them out the way, make sure you don't have anything that you'll hit. And this one right here, like I said, this is an insurance job. Uh, the insurance people want me to put it in here. Uh, I, normally, you replace the filter dryer. And all that, they didn't send that. They just sent the compressor. I'm going to put it in, uh, like they said. And uh, I told them they need to do the filter dryer. They don't want to do that. They're just doing the, just doing the compressor itself. So if you were doing a, uh, a job uh, for, for a customer, you would change this filter dryer, too. I'm hoping that they're, uh, that they're, they're telling me before I get ready to take it back that, hey, they're, not gonna, they're just going to replace it out. And this will be one of our class refrigerators. So that, that's what I'm hoping they're going to do. Sometimes they'll do that after I go pick it up. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they'll, they'll, uh, they'll tell me that, uh, what's your call? That, uh, uh, no, nah, don't, don't repair. Just uh, bill us off your labor to date. Okay. And, um, Can we put that one up, Mike, in the, in the show? Yeah. Let me uh, show them what a compressor looks like. Let me close like. it out real quick. What's right. happened? This compressor, it actually has... It actually has oil in it, like your, uh, just like your car. You might saw some of the oil came out when I took it out. It's going to have oil actually in it. Here go the compressor right here. And this right here, 
I grab it. Right. Right. Yeah, and you can just uh, talk them through it. Okay. Real quick. Don't twist it on the order. You, know? you got it? Yeah, I got it. Okay. All right. Yeah, so this is what a compressor looks like. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you was going to say something? Mike? All right. This right here is what we call a process tube. That's where you get in and out of it to get free on and stuff. This right here is going to be a high side. And that's your low side. And the high side, that's the side that actually pushes free on. And this low side is the actual side that sucks free on. Okay. So. Yeah. And these right here um, is going to be your actual compressor uh, terminals. Uh, this is going to be common, start, run, I think it is. On this one's common, start, run. But sometimes they'll switch them, switch, uh, switch them around. Okay. But you can, you can look and see which one. All right. All right. Set this one over here so we don't mix it up. Uh -huh. Okay, so here go that new one. Uh, with that new one, it comes sealed when, when it comes to you. Uh, what you have to do, when you pull it out, you might hear a little air go in. Uh, don't be afraid. They just have it sealed. And you notice on that old one, I had to put that uh, tapping valve mm -hmm. because they didn't have a way for us to get in and out of it. Mm -hmm. On the new one, I'm going to put uh, a processing uh, uh, uh uh, access uh, access valve on it where I can actually uh, if we uh, be able to use this in the class we'll be able to put our gauges on and actually take a reading and stuff and that's what I'm, I'm hoping that uh, I, they will let me keep it and just use it in the class and they just replace hers alright before you start to do the repair on these right here these process valves like I said we have to weld this on you want to take the valve stem out just like you have in your car uh, just take the valve stem out because what happened the heat, when you start putting heat on here, it actually, it's got these little rubber gaskets. It actually make that little rubber gasket uh, uh, melt and not seal and it'll leak on you. Okay. Or it gets stuck in there. Mike, what I'm going to have you do is just talk through the welding, uh -huh. but then we'll back the camera of the computer up okay. for you to actually weld it. So okay. just tell us what you'll do first, and then we'll back the camera back um, before you actually do it. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, what I'm getting ready to do here now, I'm getting ready to what we call braids. I'm going to stick this process tube in here um and what i normally do can you guys see it right here yeah this tool in there yeah and just stick it in okay and you know whenever something get hot it expands so the same thing with this metal when you get hot it expands so what i normally do don't don't push down hard but just enough to uh to kind of put some pressure on it, make an indention so it won't slide back out. And I put the pressure on it. Okay, so now you're about to braise it. Now I'm getting ready to braise it. All right, we're going to back up you guys and show you from a distance. And this right here is another skill set that you have to you have to actually do uh, to actually get good at it. And if you're just braising a little bit, you're not going to never be good at braising. It's something you have to do. I'm okay at it. I don't braise a lot. Uh, my nephew that work with me, he's really good at brazing. A lot better at it than I am. But I, I can do enough to, uh, to get us through here. Yeah, Mike, man, I got somebody got a question. We'll uh, okay, run okay. through. Uh, I don't know if you know the answer to it or not. Where do you, and this is uh, Butte Wing. Where do you guys order burned out parts for the cheap? Is there such a place? Burned out parts? Yeah, uh, I'm looking at where do you guys order burned out parts for for the cheap? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. You, you say burned out. If it's burned out, I don't want it. <laughs> uh, you, can, yeah, you, can, you, can, you can get aftermarket, uh, but burned out, you, you, not unless you're going to repair them, refurbish them, and put them back. I don't know if I want a burned out part. Uh, you got to be a little bit more specific about that. Yeah. Can we turn it? Oh, yeah, you're going to braise it right yeah, there? Yeah, I'm going to braise it right here. All right, cool. Yeah. So. Uh, when you braise it, I already turned my gas on. Uh, what you guys I'll do? I'll show them real quick. Hey, you already turned your gas valve and stuff on. And um, you can see mine, they have been through a couple of wars, but they still get the job done. All right. Yeah, I probably had this set right here uh, probably 10 or 15 years. And it's been in the back of many trucks and, and people's houses, too. You got any questions about anything put it in the chat appreciate all 46 people here hit that thumbs up button tell me where you watching this from 
Um, again, this is a more advanced. What you'll learn if you come out to the training, uh, again, is everything you need to know to get started. But um, I really wanted to expose uh, you guys to let you know that um, if you want to get more advanced with it, uh, this is some more advanced stuff that you won't be doing often. But um, again, if you choose to do this kind of work, it's five hundred dollars. And uh, Mike can do it in less than an hour, but we're going to talk through it in this video. So it'll probably take longer than that because uh, I want to make sure you guys understand what it is for those of you who do want to do this uh, in their own appliance repair business. Yeah. And um, what I, what I normally do when I'm brazing, mm -hmm. uh, I keep a little wet rag. Cool, cool. And, uh, two things off. What is the cost of replacing the compressor? Um, I think I still have it marked in that book right here. You have it, and, and we're using the blue book, which again, um, Mike explained why, and uh, again, recommends if you're brand new to this business, you could just use the blue book, which is the industry standard. Um, you know, some people out there say they want to be the cheapest person on the market and steal all the business, but Mike has a video on why you shouldn't do that as well. But uh, this compressor job is five fifty one twenty three. I don't know if the camera's gonna be able to pick up on it. Well, five fifty one twenty three, and I'll get to your other questions uh, as we go through it. What are you checking for, Mike? When you uh? Okay, what I'm checking for, I'm checking for gaps. Um, can see. I'm looking to make sure that the weld, what that the, the as we call the weld or the solder, went all the way around, and I don't have any gaps or holes um, inside this uh, around this tube where air or freon can escape. And this one right here is pretty good. It's all the way around. It's pretty good there. All right. All right. And what I normally do, go ahead. Uh, once you get your weld in, uh, have a little damp rag so you can cool it off. Otherwise, you do like I used to do. Don't pay attention and grab it, and it's hot. Or you uh, not paying attention, your arm hit it. Especially if you have one short sleeve during the summertime, and uh, you get a, a good uh, a good brand or a good tattoo on. <laughs> so uh, you got that. So now what I'm gonna do over here, I'm gonna set it back into the actual uh, refrigerator. But if you see right here. These right here. Give me one second, Mike. Okay. Give them a close up because I know some people say they don't be able to see. This right here, you see all this uh, green stuff on here? And if you see this one right here, it got like the black paint on it. Uh, all this oxidation and stuff. We want to clean that off because what happened, it'll keep the solder from flowing. So I'm going to take some sandpaper and just sand it off and clean it uh, so that uh, it, it'll make a good clean well okay. on, on all of them. So that's all I'm doing now. Cool. Just uh, sanding it down. I'm going to call out some more questions to you, Mike, right, go ahead. Uh, real quick, if we have any right. more. You guys on the timer? Or? Nah, nah, nah. Okay. Um, we're, well, we're at 43 minutes now. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, if you were trying to stay under an hour, we have 43 minutes, but I'm sure it's understandable since we're talking through everything. Okay. Um, What's up? What's up? Uh, can you explain to me why my local repair guy refuses to repair my LG refrigerator? This is Tone Baxter. You got any, uh, even though we, we won't know exactly why, but any assumption? If it's a sealed system, uh, it's because of this right here. Nobody, uh, no, if you ask anybody, most uh, most repair companies not going to do sealed systems. Okay. It's, it's, too many, it's too much of a liability. Uh, especially uh, most repair companies not going to have a shop. They can just be mobile. And they're not going to want to come into your house and actually uh, bring a torch in there and worry about... Uh, if some solder falls on your hardwood floor, burn your floor, um, they don't. They just don't want the uh, the possibility uh, and the risk that comes with doing a sealed system inside the house. And like I said, also uh, to do a sealed system, most most homeowners not gonna want to pay it, especially if it's uh if they don't if he's a if he's LG if he's the LG certified uh, appliance company in your area, he's not gonna do it because LG is gonna tell him they only gonna pay him. Uh, 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 like two hundred dollars to do it, and he said, "I ain't gonna do that. I can, you know, that's not, that's five hundred dollars dollar job." So he definitely ain't gonna do it for what LG want to pay it. So he, he'll let you and LG fight that out. Okay. 
uh, those stubborn screws will test your patience. What type of refrigerant do you use for the refrigerators? Uh, depending on what the refrigerator has. I'll show you in a little bit to tell what type of refrigerant, refrigerant you need in each refrigerator. Um, most households going to be 134A, but you need to verify. Some of the newer ones uh, are actually changing the actual refrigerant. But I'll tell you how you check which one you, you have. And sometimes it's only compression, too. This is different from the compressor. Yeah. So um, yeah, if you look at the compressor, it'll tell you what type it is. Uh, can you point to the sticker again? Just that white yeah, sticker that's on there? Yeah, white sticker is R134A. And inside the refrigerator, it'll tell you too. Okay. Also, uh, I appreciate the feedback. Somebody that said that the audio uh, may be not that great. So, again, if you guys uh, didn't hear the answer to a question, uh, you can re-ask it again. But once the job is finished, we will sit down and recap anything that you guys need. Recap uh, what you didn't see, what you didn't hear. Uh, things of that nature um, and run through it. But uh, again, since uh, this job is more so uh, waiting than actually doing anything, uh, I was like, we can uh, actually answer some questions. So it's just not a, a very quiet live stream where you're just watching uh, everything that happens. So, um, yeah, yeah. Sh shout out to you, uh, Shimona. You, you passed me that. I in case you missed the beginning of it, um, again, appreciate it. Appreciate the letter. Appreciate the book. I will be reading it. Um, I, I did the unboxing uh, live on my Instagram. Appreciate you. Uh, got it today. This is Greeter. However, uh, how can I get trained in doing this? Again, um, the Appliance Repair Boot Camp. It's a link in the chat that I put early on. If you click that link, you can come. Uh, it's an event. Mike will teach you all the basics you need to know to create your six-figure appliance repair business. Um, this is a little bit more advanced because uh, you are dealing with Freon. You got to have a little bit of knowledge when it comes to brazing and things of that nature and uh, these special tools. But um, I did want to go ahead and expose people to this because, again, um, once you learn how to do this, in less than an hour, uh, you can make over $500 if they bring the appliance to you. Mike had to go uh, for the benefit of those that are just tuning in. Mike had to go less than five miles um, up the road to pick up this appliance and will also deliver it once it's done. So it's over $900 um, because he had to go get it and bring it back. Uh, I just brazed an antenna for my shortwave last week out of Copper Pipe. That's the Suburban Homestead Outfitters. Yeah, shout out Alabama in the building. I'm watching this from Boston, Massachusetts. Appreciate you. Checking in from the DMV. Shout out to LaShawn D. Cave. Memphis in the building. Louisiana in the building. What is the price of a new compressor, Mike? You mind repeating that for the people that just tuned in? Uh, 80 to 90 dollars is, is what he what he said, though. Um and uh now let's get back to this. And it's going back in the same way it came out, Mike. It's going back in the same way it yeah. came out. So for the benefit of those that, that think you missed something you didn't, it, he's going back in the same way it came out. And he's going to weld the lines back in, put the bolts back in. Now, when you start to do this well, uh, you want to be careful uh, because you got plastic here. You got plastic fans. Uh, you got plastic here, your uh, drain, uh, your drain pan. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't take your torch in and get it too hot. And you don't want to get the side of the compressor too hot either. You want to stay right here at the joint when you're doing your brazing. Like I say, brazing is a is another skill set all into itself. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. Which I'm gonna be the one to ask this question, Mike, because okay. I honestly don't know. And uh, somebody can get me in the comment section if, if I should. So, uh, brazing and welding is not the same thing. Uh, no, nah, it's not the same thing. Okay. Uh, uh, welding is a little welder where you are, where you're going to have a little flux weld. Mm -hmm. um, brazing is just we're getting, the, we're getting the, the two metals hot enough and we're taking the silver solder. And the silver solder actually bonds to both metals. And make it pretty cool. It's called brazing. Okay. Now, the technical, the, the actual technical, uh, uh, terminology of between the two, I do not know, but uh, this is actually brazen, not uh, not, not welding. Okay. Yeah. And we're gonna back up just a little bit because, uh, but again, if you you're curious to what's going on, he's just uh, 
welding the lines back in, but I think right there, far enough for people to be able to see what's going on. And again, we will get your questions here. This one right here is one of the harder ones because it's um uh, it's behind. I gotta get I gotta get way behind it. I don't want my I don't want my car too hot. And when it comes to knowing what temperature it should be at, is that just from experience? Yes, experience. You're learning, you're learning, A lot, a lot of times I can, I can listen to it. And can you repeat that one more time, Mike, just in case the audio was bad? I come from uh, knowing the actual temperature. It actually comes from actually doing it a little bit, and you actually, uh, you actually see your, see your. Listen, uh, I can listen to it and tell about how hot it is. And because this one's on the back side, I gotta use my little uh mirror to actually go to the back side and look and see, make sure it's it, it filled all the way in. Appreciate all 40 people in the chat. Hit that thumbs up button if you haven't done so already. Comment where you're watching this video from. Any questions you have, put them in the chat. We are going through the chat um, as we're actually doing this one, which is different than how we usually do it. But since there was um, more so a little bit more waiting in this repair than actually just action, decided to go ahead and answer questions uh, as we run through it. All right. And again, for the sake of those that are just tuning in, you're just welding back the line. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's see if there are any questions really quick. Well, get that going. Shout out everybody here. Appreciate you being here. Do you need a license for this? To do the free on, yes. Yes, to do the free on, yes. Again, that's why this is more of an advanced course. Uh, me and Mike did talk about this uh before the video, though, he said that you can get the license online. And you said last time you checked it was what around $75, $100? I took the test, it was about $75, $100. Yeah, which it might have updated since then. Yeah, but well, don't um, check because that, that's been years ago when I, when I took the test. Okay, so yeah, so you do need a license for this, but I just want you to see what's possible. Uh, let's say you start off your appliance repair business, your cell phone repair business, and you like how things are going and you want to do more advanced stuff. Uh, this is an example of something that will be more advanced that you wouldn't do very often, but um, it's like an hour job. You'll make over $500 uh, if, it, if it came to you, over $900 if you had to go get it. And again, Mike went, uh, it's going to be less than 10 miles round trip. Now, if you're going to, if you want to, if you got into this, you want to do heating in there, you would do a whole lot of this. And we say then you got a license to print money because mm -hmm. uh, you get paid a lot of money to do this in heating there. Okay, what I gotta do now? You, you see right here? Wait, it fits. I ain't gotta do it. All right, I was gonna uh, I was thought I had to uh, uh, what we call swag it. I don't have to swag it, but this one right here is gonna be a little bit trickier. Uh, if you look, we got two different metals coming in right here. We got this uh, we got this uh, steel and we got this copper. 
So I gotta be very careful because what happened, the two metals, they uh they act the temperatures and characteristics are different. If I get it too hot on one, it might burn through the other one. But I have to be careful because I can't get it too hot to burn through, and I gotta get it hot enough to actually uh, accept the uh, accept the solder. So this one is the one I hate the most. So I gotta really take my time with it, and um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to move it around. Um, not let it stay in one spot, and uh, until I can get the actual flux to go in. All right, cool. So that's an update for you guys that want to know what's going on. Also. Do you do you get a certificate after the training, Mike? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna give you a certificate. We're gonna print out certificates for everybody, yeah. and we're gonna uh, I'm gonna give you a certificate saying you came. Yeah, we definitely gonna get everybody a certificate. And uh, if you're brand new and you've never seen this sort of live stream format again, Mike has almost 20 years of experience. Um, doing this sort of work in the appliance repair field and the electrical field. So he really knows what he's talking about doing all sorts of work in this field. So you're really learning from one of the best people out uh, that can train you on how to do this sort of business. It's a little bit closer. Yeah, turn cherry red. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Off of it. So for what happened. Uh, uh, cut through, and then you really have problems. Right there. Shout out Dallas, Texas in the building. We got Monique Smith from Clayton, North Carolina in the building. Oh, way to go, Clayton. Yeah. <laughs> got Charlotte, North Carolina in the building. Uh, and you just cooling it off again, yeah, Mike? Yeah, cooling it off. All right. So now what we want to do, I got everything braised in. Um, and I need to now check and make sure I don't have any leaks. And uh, how I'm going to do that. That's the other thing too. When you're doing freon, make sure you got gloves on. So that, that excess gas that come out is freezing cold. It freeze your hands. You frost. All right. All right. So what I'm gonna do here now? I'm gonna actually uh, find a place to hook on there. And what is this gauge going to tell you, Mike? As you do this, uh, what I'm getting ready to do now. I'm getting ready to uh, fill it, fill it up with nitrogen. As we say, put some pressure, put some pressure on the line. What you want to do is put about uh, 200 pounds of pressure on here. So if, if we put, put 200 pounds of pressure on there. Before you start it, Mike, I want you to back up just so people okay. can see the whole setup. All right. All right. All right. What I'm going to do, I got a nitrogen tank right here. And I'm going to take this nitrogen that I have in this tank, and I'm going to put it, try to put 200 pounds or 300 pounds of pressure on those joints. I'm going to put, fill it up, and if I got any leaks, it'll start to blow, and I know where the leaks at. And nitrogen is a gas that don't bond to, to, to anything, and so that way we don't have to worry about uh, it taking moisture or it's actually bonding with the freon when we put it back in there, making some other characteristics. Of the free on that we don't want. So what I'm gonna do? Turn this on. Turn it off. Turn it off. What I want to do? What I'm gonna do now? Just let it sit there. Um, let's look and see where your gauges are at. And we're just gonna let it sit there for a couple of minutes. We'll go through the actual. I I only got a gauge on the low side, so I'm just gonna let it sit there for a while, while a couple of minutes to make sure that the gauge doesn't uh, move down. Now it's gonna move just a little bit because what's gonna happen? What we call our metering device. 
it's gonna start letting a little bit of freon go to the uh, on, over to the other side of the uh, system, but it shouldn't be nothing that where it's moving out. Kind of like your uh, car tire when you're checking the pressure on your car tire. That's what we're doing here. We're just making sure we don't have any leaks. And Mike, how would somebody know or can possibly know that maybe their compressor is bad in their refrigerator? Um, what kind of problems will you have if your compressor is bad in your refrigerator? Uh, it won't cool. Uh, you open up to the evaporator coil. You go to the evaporator coil section. Uh, you only see like a fro on the frost pattern. Man, we'll learn this in class where you go look at the frost pattern. And the frost pattern will just have uh, just a little bit of frost at the first couple of pulls. And you know the Freon is not going all the way through. Um, with a home refrigerator, uh, we, we, we classify everything as a sealed system problem because they don't give you taps. They actually get on the high side and the low side, with like a, a home uh, like a home air conditioning unit. Well, I can actually tell if it's the compressor, if it's the actual which coil is leaking and stuff. They don't give you the option on a refrigerator. They just say, hey, it's a sealed system. And then you have to actually figure out where, uh, where the problem lies at. Um, if I had a leak somewhere in here, It'll start leaking down. If I don't see anything coming from my joints, then I actually have to start looking at the actual devices. I have to separate. Um, but when you start doing that, it's not worth it because what happens, some of these lines, you know, they actually run through the actual body of the refrigerator. In order to get to them, it's not like your home air conditioning unit where they're just running up under your house or they're running your attic and you can just pull them out. To get to the lines here, you have to actually cut, cut the actual cabinet. So if you got a leak in the cabinet and stuff, it ain't worth it. We got a leak in the evaporator coil on some units, like a sub zero, a, a GE monogram, a Viking, something that costs ten, twelve thousand dollars. Yeah, then you can um, you can actually then fix those. And um, in order to fix, uh, once you get to a point where you're working on those type of refrigerators, uh, that that's a, a whole different ball game. And they only let a select few people work on them. And uh, it's a waiting list to actually start to get into their uh, uh, become a. Uh, authorized man, uh, authorized service for them. You, that's just not something anybody can walk into. They're going to do a, a very strict uh, 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 process of bringing you on board, and you're going to have to be really good on refrigeration to start working with everything. Okay. Cool. All right. So we'll All right. Going to get to some more uh, questions. Okay. Uh, EO, EOM Yenum 1 is from Charlotte, okay. North Carolina. Uh, Brazing is simply soldering, welding, and merging. Arc welding is usually electricity. There you uh, go. Yeah. Yeah. What are you cats doing again for the benefit of anybody that brand new that just checked in? Comment where you watching this from. Hit that like button. This is uh, an, uh, an advanced training of what you can do with your appliance repair business. So this is not something that you'll do every day, um, but this is a repair that you can do for uh, over $500 if they bring the unit to you and you can make over $500 doing this repair. And again, we're justifying our prices using the blue book, which is what Mike recommends if you're brand new to this business. And um, again, for those of you that want to come out to the training and learn the basics, the information that you're going to learn in the basics is more than enough for you to go out and make six figures with your appliance repair business or your cell phone repair business. But as always, I, I'm encouraging people to have multiple streams of income and also to scale those incomes uh, as well. So this is more so on the scaling side. So uh, if you get into your appliance repair, making six figures, you're comfortable with doing the routine things and you say, okay, uh, I'm now interested in doing more. I don't mind getting uh, certified or licensed in Freon and learning how to braise and advancing uh, the skills that I have. This is the kind of work you'll be doing and the kind of money that you can be making. Again, the video is only over an hour because we're talking through it, answering you guys' questions and, uh, and anything like that uh, for the benefit of anybody that's just tuning in. Uh, so I left the chat and I don't know if you answered this one. Are you guys providing room and board for the two days? No. Uh, Michael Simmons, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Shout out to you. Uh, I guess he hears it like the firefighters do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get After you do it a while, you, you kind of can tell about how hot it is and it, I, I can look at actual flames and tell about, about where it's at. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I'm cool. pretty sure somebody who does it all the time, they can tell you the exact mixture you need to have to get to certain temperatures. I don't do it enough uh, to be able to tell you that. My nephew probably could tell you uh, where he set the gauges and what PSI and stuff. I just turn the gauges up high and listen to it and, and, and go to where I need to go. So what I'm getting ready to do now, uh, our, our pressure is not moving. 
Um, this right here is uh, what we call the starting relays. You saw the old ones had some burn on them. I just put the new ones on, and I'm just going to plug it onto the uh, the compressor. And as you look on the back of the compressor, uh, right here, it, it actually matches up to the way it has to go. So you see these three prongs right here? Uh, this right here, it got one, two, three holes right here. So it just, it just slides right on that. Now, Mike, is, is, uh, does it matter if you did this before now? Like if somebody would think that it's easier to do it before they weld it in place? Um, same thing, like I said, because when you are uh, brazen, you got all that heat, and you got electronic parts. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to keep everything uh, away from the, the heat as much as possible. But uh, you could do it, but I try to keep everything from the heat as much as possible. But like I say, if somebody who does it all the time, who's comfortable with it, they uh they don't they don't mind just uh throwing it on there and go. But it, it really good as well a brazen. White white plugs that in again. Running through the chat. It helps me to be comfortable knowing that there are uh, Nubian brothers like ourselves that are doing this. Gives me a lot of confidence. Appreciate that. Uh, where do you get the parts for the appliances? And where is a good place to get appliances to buy work on and sell other than getting a house call to fix? Okay. All right. So I just moved this. Hold on one second. We'll get back to that question. Go ahead. Okay. All right. You just move this. And you, you hear it? Mm -hmm. Right here? Yeah, you can hear the air coming hear the, through yeah, there. You hear the freon coming out. So I'm going to have a whistle call. And I can see it dropping some. So what I'm going to do, I have to rebraze this. Okay. I'm going to let the air out. So you're going to hear a lot of air come out. But it's nice. Ohio in the building. Shout out Dallas Richardson. What's going on? JT Hustles and Mike Sneed. Great info. Um, so the guy want to know where you can get the uh, cheap appliances from. Uh, yeah. Uh, where do you get the parts for the appliances? Where's a good place to get appliances to buy work on and sell other than getting a house call to fix? Okay. Uh, uh, those that come to our class, they're going to they get an actual uh, parts catalog book uh, and have all the parts that they need. And it has the breakdown of the appliances. So they'll get that. Okay. Uh, those that come to our classes. Uh, and there'll also be marketing information too there, right? Right. Okay. So, so cool. There, uh, cool. You can go online to my website on uh, order parts. Uh, now, to get appliances, if you want appliances to work on, mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of ways. Uh, you can go to Craigslist to the free section. There's always somebody giving away uh, something for free, or they selling the appliances for cheap. Mm -hmm. And you can uh, go out those and, and retire them and sell them and flip them. All right. um, here in North Carolina, and especially out here in the country, we have what we call uh, some convenience sites mm -hmm. where uh, people can take their old appliances, like to the trash dump. And they have a big, uh, they have a big, uh, big trailer where they put them at. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can you can go there and get some of them if you get in good with the people who work there. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't just go there and be scrambling through them, but if you get in good with the guys that work there, sometimes they'll let you come through grab some. Uh, if cool. you it used to be if you got up early enough. Yeah, cool. Uh, one more. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. If you got up early enough, you can what's call. call. You could go to uh, you could go to behind Lowe's, Home Depot when they brought in the uh, the returns. You could pick them up, but now I think now they might be selling them. Cool. Cool. Let me say hi to Nick Gurr. He's your biggest fan. Shout out Nick Gurr. Appreciate <laughs> you tuning in. And shout out to uh, Josh for, for saying that. I mean, uh, James Backus for saying that. Can you say hi to Nick Gurr? He's your biggest fan. Shout out Nick Gurr. Shout out James Backus. 
Um, is it too late to register for the second event on in June? No, nope. the link is already um, in the chat. I'll put it in the chat again. Uh, off the top of my head, and since Mike's working, I know he's not checking it, but um, we have a few spots left. If you guys want to come out uh, to the event, we'll talk more about the event here in a second. Just want to give you guys an update of what we're doing. Mike, again, is just rebrazing this, as he said. That's what's going on with the appliance for those of you because uh, we want to keep you updated uh, and let you guys know what's going on. So he's just rebrazing that to repair that uh, as I go through the question uh, with them. Um, also, uh, I don't know if it was the same person or if it was several people, but it's all good. Uh, so I want to address it now as well. Um, $500 for the event, two day event. Again, in other videos, we talked about the alternative. If you don't see the value of spending $500 in two days to make a hundred thousand uh, dollars or more because six figures don't mean just a hundred thousand dollars you can make more than a hundred grand if you don't see the value of that the event's not for you i, I got over 400 free videos on this channel you can check that out but for those of you who seriously want to come out learn how to fix appliances have hands-on experience uh get practical information how do you market how do you diagnose problems how do you fix those problems how do you scale your business from somebody with almost 20 years of experience this course is uh this event is for you uh as far as the course goes after the event those of you that can't make it the course will be available online through teachable link to that will be in the description of this video after this live stream has posted but it is not too late to register for the second event uh the first event is already sold out second event is almost sold out it's over halfway sold out we don't have an exact number we'll know after this live stream uh when we can check it um, but again, if you want to come out, come out. Uh, I can't read what that says, but shout out to Brazil. I see Brazil is in the chat. Uh, Douglas Games GTA 5, appreciate you. Um, what are the best, highest quality gauges that I should get? Uh, uh, depending on if you're going to be doing gate, uh, be doing uh, refrigeration work. Uh, I, I always use the Robin Air gauges. I don't I, I always have to keep one, so I don't. I don't know. Uh, I what we call. I don't do it much. But go to the heating and air place, and they'll tell you. Uh, you go expensive if you want. Uh, uh, like I said, I, I don't. I don't do much of it, so I just get the cheapest heads I can find. Okay, and I'll link the exact ones that Mike uses in the uh, description. Yellow jackets. I got the yellow jackets. Okay. Oh, oh, cheap yellow jackets. Okay. So yep. Yeah. That's what he uses. If you have trouble finding it, I'll make sure that that is in the description after this live stream is posted. Yeah. Yeah. And like I say, I don't use them much, so I don't go out and spend a lot of money on them. Yeah. Appreciate all 35 people that's still in the chat. We've been in this chat over an hour. Thanks for rocking with me. For those of you that are interested in this business and uh, wanted to see a live repair, again, uh, this repair could be done in less than an hour. But, um, well, Mike, just for the record, uh, if, if I wasn't here asking you a hundred questions and going through the chat, how fast do you think you could have did this if it was just you? By myself? Yeah. I, I could do it in about an hour. Okay. About 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. If, I, if I'm getting, I got to get in and out 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. So, yeah. So, just hearing it directly from the man that does this, yeah, 45 minutes to an hour, you can do it. And uh, we, we went over the blue book costs uh, as well as what Mike is actually going to make off of this job uh, for driving 10 uh 10 miles round trip to go get it and take it back it's gonna be uh over nine hundred dollars all right mike tell the people what you're doing now uh, all i'm doing now uh my uh I, i've checked my my uh my joints are good so all i'm doing now is just turning off turning off the gas to my hoses and stuff and just getting them ready to, uh, to be put back okay so the repair is done uh just about Okay. We got uh just got one or two more things to do. We be we be done. Okay. Cool, cool. Let me see if any more questions in that chat. Uh, since we're almost about to finish this up, because uh, I think we're we're touching on all of them. Again, that link that I just put in the chat 
is uh is earlier in the chat but for the benefit of those that are just tuning in i've also added it again if you want to click that link register for the course come out a uh, two-day event um if you're brand new and and didn't hear it before in other videos or earlier in this video the alternatives are you go three weeks in ohio for four grand you go to college for 30 grand or you come here for two days and 500 dollars and you learn the exact same information maybe even more information because you're getting it from somebody that does this every single day You've been doing it now almost 20 years and has made a lot of money doing so and is kind enough uh to share this information so uh if you guys don't know already mike has his own youtube channel as well it's called save invest repeat save invest repeat is that mike is um, in an investment group he has his own appliance repair business uh he's in the real estate mike's the man so that's why that's why I call him a mentor. I call him up all the time, ask some questions. And uh, yeah, just love learning from uh, like-minded individuals uh, that just has been in the game longer than me. Um, and, and I really am seeing the value of having a good mentor. So it'll mean a lot to me. You guys go follow Save Invest Repeat on YouTube. Uh, he has two videos out now. Uh, well, more than two videos. He has two videos out now that'll tell you how to repair a cell phone. So if you saw my last live stream, uh, then you already know how easy it is to find repairs. So uh, you can go out and uh, watch that video, learn how to do that, and move on from there. Yeah, and with the cell phone uh, training, uh, when they come to the five boot camp, um, Oliver, he's gonna he's gonna come in and help me do the cell phone. Now, Oliver, he, uh, like I said, he, he uh, anything you want to know about cell phones and stuff, he knows it. He comes from Venezuela, and that's how he earned his money, going, uh, taking cell phones, going over to Cuba, and flipping them. Mm -hmm. So he, he's going to come in and help me teach the cell phone plan. Yeah. Appreciate you, uh, Winner for 19. Says, uh, I'm not paying. Uh, I'm going to let Mike read that one. $30,000. I'd rather support my own people. So uh, shout out to that. Might read that, that last comment <laughs> right here. I'm not paying. Oh, <laughs> okay. So I appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate you for that. So yeah. And, uh, and you two might hide that comment, but uh, let, me, <laughs> let me see if I can. Uh, okay, yeah, so but appreciate that. that. What we're gonna do now? Okay. All right. So now what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put the vial stem that we took out. I'm gonna put it back in, just like you do a car tire, and it just screws right back in. If you guys are having trouble with the angle, put it in the chat. Uh, I'm trying to do the best I can. If you don't know, when I go live, I'm doing it from the laptop. But I like going live, and Mike likes going live, because if you have a real-time question, you get a real-time answer or a comment. Otherwise, uh, you can leave a comment underneath this video, and I try to get to all of them. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a ton of comments come through. So uh, this is for the benefit of anybody that uh, wants to tune in live, learn the game live, and uh, has any questions. So. Um, Garnet Pope says, look good. Appreciate that. So the visuals are good on it. What's next, Mike? Uh, what we got to do now, uh, we open up that refrigerant line, um, cause we, we had the vial stem open and stuff. Mm -hmm. So when we open it up, um, uh, we let, uh, just regular atmospheric air in it and the air carries water molecules and everything else. And if we were to put our Freon in there, it would actually bond with the Freon and give it different characteristics. Because what happened at certain pressures, the freon um, evaporation and condensing temperature changes. But if you got water in there, it, it won't it won't be a consistent uh, gas in its natural state of freon. Mm -hmm. So what happened? It'll make the, the gauges go off, and it won't be uh, the temperature you want. So mm -hmm. what we gotta do? We gotta suck all the air that's inside the system out, kind of like you do your brakes line. You purge your lines. Mm -hmm. We gotta do that the same way. Get all the moisture and all the air out. Yeah. So what we gonna do that with? Uh, what we call, and if that explanation don't prove that Mike is the greatest teacher <laughs> of all time, so what we're gonna do now? We're gonna um, we're gonna actually uh, get what we call vacuum pump, and we're gonna we're gonna vacuum all the air out of here. 
And this, um, this right here, I'm gonna let it go. It's a, the refrigerator is not that big. If I was doing a, a home air conditioning unit, I would set this up and maybe leave and go get lunch. Okay. Um, the refrigerator is not that long, so we're gonna let it go for about ten minutes. And uh, I'm gonna can we slide it a little bit close? Oh, nah, Mike, I think we got yeah. it. Okay. Yep. So that's what it looks like. And say the name of it again, this Mike. Called vacuum pump. Vacuum pump, you guys. And all it does is just like a. It's just like that, just like that recovery unit right there. It's just a compressor that just uh just sucking air. But the government make me have to buy that recovery unit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it used to be in the old days, that's all we had. And uh so they make you buy that four or five hundred dollar unit. And you can only do certain types of gases. You know, can't do every gas. All right. So that's the other thing too. That's the other thing too. When you get into this, certain gauges work with certain different freons. Certain vacuum pump, certain recovery units work for certain different uh, freon. Every type of freon you recover, you gotta have a different tank for it. So that's why I say, unless you're gonna go full blast into the refrigeration, uh, it's really not working. And like I said, you won't get enough people uh, opting out to get this type of repair done either. Mm -hmm. I got to this back too. That's the other thing with your compressors. When you change them out, you got to braze the, the, the you got to braze the ends shut too. You got to wear those shut on the old one. On the old one, okay. Because uh, because the oil that they have in here, the oil actually got freon in it, and it still keep escaping. Okay. So we got weld these shut too before you uh. Take it to the uh, landfill or wherever you want to dump it off at. Can you scrap those, Mike, or no? Uh, scrap yards, a lot of times I take refrigeration because of refrigerators because of this. Mm -hmm. Um, you can you can take it to your uh to your uh county landfill, um, and they they have to take it, but you got to make sure that the lines are, are braced off. Okay. Uh, whenever you buy uh buy a appliance, you'll notice uh on your receipt you have what they call a white goods tax. Mm -hmm. And that's what our white good tax is. That uh, that means uh, you can take it to any uh, landfill. They have to take it, and you pay the tax for it when you bought it. Mm -hmm. So that that eliminates uh, like like people used to do back in the days, just go down to the side of the road and push it off the back of the truck. Oh, um, so they got tired of people doing that, and they say, well, they didn't want to pay to get it uh to get it uh to get it recovered. So they say, okay, what we'll do, you just pay it when you buy it, and you can take it to any uh. Uh, recovery spot and they're taking. Oh, cool. Do they any more uh, questions? Because this video is all but done, you guys. Just wrapping it up right here. Okay. What I'm going to do here. Um, Save, invest, repeat is, is Mike's YouTube channel. Um, instead of doing the cell phone repair here, I want his channel to grow as well. So Save, invest, repeat is Mike's YouTube channel. And he has two videos out there so far on how to fix cell phones. He also has videos about real estate. And uh, all the other things that he's into, upholstery work, you name it. So if you're a hustler, you need to follow JT Hustles. You also need to follow Save, Invest, Repeat, which is my mentor, Mr. Mike Sneed, out there. Also, for the benefit of anybody that's new, that's just tuning in, please hit that like button, comment where you're watching this from. If you're interested in an investment group, uh, I've done several videos on this channel about an investment group. Uh, Mike is in one, a very successful one, on April the 8th. I will be doing a live stream from his investment group. Uh, if you don't want, if you don't know what an investment group is, uh, watch the video on this channel uh, that talks about how to become a millionaire, and that will lead you in the right direction, and you'll get brought up to speed on investment groups and uh, how people put their money together to achieve great things. If you are interested in starting an investment group and want any questions, I'm going to go before his investment group, ask all of you guys' questions live. That so you guys see the event. And uh, 
real quick. Just show you guys. Mike just raising this. Now just raising the end real quick. Yeah, just want to show you guys the whole process so you don't feel like you, you missed out on a step. So yeah, just braising both those ends closed. But yeah, if you want to watch it because you're interested in starting the investment group, tune in April the 8th. Uh, I personally recommend if you already got some family members, some friends or whoever that you're thinking about, hey, let's put our money together and you know make more money by investing in businesses, real estate, whatever it is that you guys want to come together and do with your group economics. Mike has been a part of a successful group. How long have y'all uh, had that investment group, Mike? Well, the second year, second or third year. Going on the second or third year, and um, been having a lot of success with it. I'll let him talk more about it either on his channel or on the event. So save the date, April the eighth. Make sure post notifications are on, which means that you hit that little bell button underneath this video, so that when that happens, uh, then you will get notified. Watch it with your friends. Watch it with your family members. If you got any questions about, hey. What can me, my cousins, me and my friends do to make more money if we put our money together besides just having a, a joint savings account and it ain't making us no money? Uh, that is the live stream for you. You can ask all your questions there. So that is when the event is. I will be there live. Hopefully you will be there live and get all your questions answered. So after that, uh, you guys can have another income stream. So you can do the hustles that I'm teaching you and also have another income stream. Uh, with the people that, that you trust, that you care about, that you want to come together with and uh, start building wealth. What's going on now, Mike, for the people? Okay. Yeah, um, just talk us through what you're doing. To, to, get, uh, to get this done a little quicker, so we won't be here all day. Yeah. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how we put the free on there. Um, we use the same free on like you have in your car. You can go out and buy the big jug and cost you a, a couple of hundred dollars. What I do, I just go buy the uh, stuff you buy at the AutoZone, CarQuest. It's the exact same three on to go in your car. And you need to buy, uh, let me find my connector. All right. Why are you doing that, Mike? Uh, no problem here. Looks good. Vacuum pump. Let's see where we left off. Uh, but yeah, Save Invest Repeat is Mike's YouTube channel. Uh, wow, fridge, uh, radar work, uh, but my freezer don't work. What is the problem? Uh, milkman trucker, we need a little bit more information. Yeah, it could be a lot of things. Yeah, that. yeah, uh, need a, a, to know exactly what it is, um, to, to help try and diagnose. Because as you can see, there, there's more than one part in these appliances, so uh, it's hard to say what's wrong if you're just saying it, it's just not working. Um, good stuff, you guys. Much appreciated. Appreciate you. Had a lot of trouble here in New England in the HVAC business. There's a lot of racism here. I was not able to progress here in the HVAC and refrigeration field here. I'm looking to relocate. Uh, Mike, how is the uh, the refrigeration, since I know you don't do HVAC, but how is refrigeration jobs been for you since you've been in North Carolina? Uh, North Carolina is, is good. It's, uh, is that a union state? Absolutely, have to have a, is that a union state? Uh, yeah, is uh, is New England? Are you in a uh, a union state? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what we're uh, going to do, uh, right here, you can buy this little clamp. And what'll happen? I'm gonna put this right here on my can, and I'm gonna clamp down on it. Same thing. This has a little uh, a little valve in here that's gonna punch a hole in this can. Yeah, can we can we show them the valve again? I don't think they was able to see it okay. clear. All right, right here. Okay, yeah, that little black piece on the inside. Yeah, that's a little pin. Yeah. So when okay. I put this around the can and squeeze down, it, this pin gonna stick a hole in there. And then you can actually uh, this gauge right here, you can hook up to an air conditioner. Uh, this is the air conditioner gauges or a car gauge, and you can use the free on, free on out the can. So you don't have to have a big hundred dollar can. You can just buy the little five dollar can. Okay, and how much that tool in your hand is? Uh, this is like five, six dollars. You can buy uh online okay. uh, appliance store. Sometimes they have an auto mechanic store too. Okay, and again, for those of you that have trouble finding the tools, you can source it anywhere. But just for convenience, I'll I'll link that in the description as well. If anybody wants to uh, get it through that link. Okay. Um. So yeah. So it's like so you can spend ten dollars or you can spend a hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna this back a little bit. All right. Um, I'm gonna set this down and uh help you, Mike. Uh, yeah. Let me move this gauge. Hold on. 
Oh, you probably already have the second one. All right. Now, what I'm doing. Give me one second. I'm bringing the camera around. I don't know if you can, if you can get in. Can you get in here? Okay. Can I push you back a little bit more if you can bring the camera? Uh, yeah, yeah. Give me one second. Yeah. Can you, you move those tools? Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can you can get around here. Can you get in? Uh, okay. Inside your refrigerator, you can see it right here. Okay. It's a little tag right here. And on the tag, it'll tell you how much Freon should go in here. And this right here, it says you got to have R134A. You gotta have six point one seven ounces. I'm gonna zoom in on the phone best I can. So you're looking at that that tag that says Samsung at the top, you yeah. guys. So that is what he's reading, uh, and this is just on the inside of it. Right. Yeah. All right. And so what that what that can do that tells you uh, how how much uh, freon you can actually put in there. Uh, what I'm gonna do uh, because it's such a, a small amount, and uh, that can is like 11, 12 ounces. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show y'all how to put it in. Usually, what you're supposed to do is have a cylinder and weigh it with a refrigerator. Some of the newer ones that, that have like a, a dual cooling, this one doesn't. I would weigh it in on this one because of time. I'm just going to show y'all how I put it in. Not, uh, I might just look at the coils or because of time, I might just wait and just show y'all how it go in. And then uh, tomorrow or whatever, we might do another video. Show you how to actually uh, gauge the coils and stuff, make you see uh, exactly how much when you got enough freon in there. Okay. As I let it run for a little while, I can let it run for about an hour and look at the actual coils and see where the uh, coils are actually frosting at. Mm -hmm. That's what I normally like to do. Um, but unless I have something like a high end refrigerator or I got something that got a dual cool, uh, then I'll weigh it in. But here, I'm not gonna weigh it, I'm just gonna put it in and let it run and uh, for about an hour and then I'll come back and check the evaporator. All right, you guys. Yeah, and we're not going to make you guys wait for the whole hour, but uh, nah, that's the explanation of what's going to happen next. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so I'm going to let it run. Matter of fact, I'm going to let it run overnight. And then when I come back in the morning, I can look and see exactly where we're at. Okay. All right. So what you want to do right here, let's go ahead and connect your gauges. Hit that like button if you haven't done so already. Again, I appreciate everybody that's been rocking with us this whole live chat. I know it's kind of long, but again, you guys know if you've been rocking with my channel for any amount of time, I try to just give you as much game as possible. I can give you the information. The hustle is up to you. So uh, I'm just giving you guys uh, just some more information. All right. I'm just going to squeeze down. I squeeze down and put a hole in it. And now we're good. Uh, what you want to do here? Uh, because uh, when I connect that, it already got air in this line. You want to purge the line. So what I want to do, I want to twist this valve down until I see the uh, freon come through. Then I know the air is out. If I go to the right one. That's why I like to do it live. So y'all get to see it. Yeah, man. Realest channel on YouTube. Okay. So there, you saw the white stuff come out. That was the Freon. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually uh, uh, find somewhere to plug this thing in. At. And again, he's just now just about to plug it in. Set you guys down. Appreciate everybody that's here. Uh, put in the comment section any uh, if you've been here for the mo the majority of the chat, the whole chat, whatever the uh, the case is. Again, at this point, Mike is just about to plug it in. And again, uh, yeah, uh, winner for 19, if you're still in the chat, um, are you in a, a union state? Uh, or if you see this after the fact, just comment it. And uh, Karen Cass, oh, I missed a lot. Oh, I remember you, Karen. I read a comment of yours recently about uh, watching the video of being repaired. 
Shout out to, <laughs> shout out to Karen. All right, you guys. So any more questions you guys got, put it in the chat. I know we kind of did it differently this time. But again, as you guys can see, uh, the actual job, uh, there is a lot of like waiting, like uh, purging the lines and uh, once it gets to brazen and things with the free iron. So it's not a, a really it's not a high action job. But again, like Mike said, you could do it in an hour. And um, you can make money if we wasn't asking them a bunch of questions. But uh, for the purposes uh, of this video, you guys know it's just to give you guys the game. So to show you guys uh, what's going on. Mike, Mike, what you doing now? All right. Um, let's see how wide the compressor went out. Uh, if you look right here on this fan, you see uh, how it's really discolored right here. And it's light right here. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened, that let me know that compressor was getting really hot. And it actually burned it. So what I'm doing now, I'm plugging the fan on, and I noticed the fan was humming. You hear the fan is not turning? Mm -hmm. It's humming. So mm -hmm. that's what burnt the compressor out. They're going to need a new fan, too. So hopefully I'll be able to take this to the class. So the fan is not turning. That fan is supposed to turn and keep that compressor cool. Okay, so the compressor went out because of the fan. Yeah, because of the fan. So did that fan make this compressor bad now? Or not, not yet, yet, but I'm going to cut it off because okay. I need a new fan. Mode. That's why you can look at this and see the discoloration. You can tell how it's going to heat it up right there. Yeah, so that's probably what brought, brought the uh, compressor out. If you run a compressor without the fan turning, then just get too hot and it'll burn it out. Okay, so again, got that's a tool. Like yep, yep. But you guys still saw the process of uh, fixing a compressor, but uh, now we ran into a secondary problem uh, that Mike has diagnosed and needs to be repaired as well. So you do it the same way, and if your fan is not bad, uh, then again, you know, this will work fine. But uh, like Mike said, there are parts of this repair uh, that he's not going to do because uh, in these kind of jobs, Mike, you only do what the warranty tells you to do. Is that correct? Yeah, I only do what the warranty yeah. tells me. I give them a price to do everything, and then they'll tell me what to do. Uh, this one right here, uh, normally what we'll do, we'll go out and look at it first. Another company goes out and they diagnose it. Then we'll go out and look at it and make sure. Uh, I think they should go out and look at it. Uh, compressor was bad. Uh, I probably should have plugged it up before I done it. I would I would pick the fan up. I don't know if the extra heat right there messed the fan up, but uh, normally I plug it up before I start. I should plug it up before I thought I was going to take the fan gone too. But uh, that's good. So this probably be one of our uh, our our classroom refrigerators now. <laughs> So I got another classroom for this. This, this is good. Okay. And I also want to emphasize to the people in the chat, if you come to the class, Mike is going to give you a checklist on what you go through. Like if it was you, your business, going out to do this whole process was different here, is like how he said, uh, when a warranty company is who pays you, you don't really want to go out and fix everything and only get paid for what they told you to do. So um, don't worry about uh, if you were thinking about what if I went out and did this and ran into this problem, uh, you will have a checklist. So you would have found this before you did all of this work. Um, but again, it was a learning experience for if you ever decide to get uh, contracts uh, and work with warranty companies as well. Uh, let me see if there's anything else in the, the chat. Uh, I'm in Massachusetts. Uh, Boston, Massachusetts. It is a union state, Mike. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I, 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 that's one of the reasons I don't like union states. Remember, I told y'all a while ago what the unions were for. The unions was uh, it, it's actually doing what it's supposed to do, not to give you a job. That's what they were created for. They were created when the slaves left out of slavery. They went up north, and they were the only skilled tradesmen. And uh, uh people up north got mad because the, uh, the slaves were progressing and moving ahead. So they said, okay, in order for you to work in the steel trade, you had to be in the union and no African American could actually join the union. So I uh, can't get mad at doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, I'll say get out of get out of the union state and come to a, a right to work state. So uh, you come down south, you, uh, all you need uh bring your bring your uh bring your skill set and uh bring your tool back and you can go to work. You don't have to worry about nobody telling you you can and cannot work. That's 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 the main reason why I don't like unions. Cool, cool. Karen Cass said, don't punk me. I regressed in the comment. I love you, Karen Cass, man. Appreciate <laughs> you being here. Uh, it's all good fun. Uh, you guys can put whatever you want in the comment section, but I just want you to know I read every comment. 
I just want you to know I read every comment. So I appreciate you though. Much love uh, to anybody that tunes in, leaves a comment in the chat or underneath the video. But just know, I see it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like uh, JT said, when you're doing uh, when you're doing warranty work, uh, the warranty people will tell you what to what to repair, and you tell them the risk of what it is they want to do. Um, and but they after you tell them the risk, if they tell you to go ahead and do it, you do it. So uh, when they come back and I, I tell them, hey, you got a bad fan too, um, I still get my money. Um, and uh, I tell them you got bad fans, see what they want to do. Okay. Um, and we, uh, I can say, hey, I, I, I told you the risk of it, uh, but you, you said go ahead. Okay, so they got to pay you for that compressor job. Yeah, they got to pay. Yeah, them. even though it's still broken. Right. <laughs> cool, cool. Right. So they decide they want to pay. They might just say forget it. Uh, a lot of times, uh, with some of the warranty, uh, they might say, hey, man, uh, we're gonna get you a new one. You know, they might say. Uh, for her to go buy a new uh, appliance, mm -hmm. the young lady or or young man, I don't know who it is, they might have decided they didn't want the amount that they were going to pay them out. Kind of like if your car get total and you, they come and they give you an offer and you might not like it and you just tell them, hey, uh, you, you got it here, you can tell them not go ahead and fix it. And so then uh, she probably done that because she wants to put no money back into it. Right. So they probably go back in. And, just, and I'm pulling out the blue book again. And Mike, you said it's called a fan. Uh, that's a uh, condenser fan. Okay, a condenser fan motor. Uh, and again, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but I'll read it to you. For a condenser fan motor, that is two hundred and sixty-eight dollars and thirty-nine cent, on top of the nine hundred dollars and change uh, for the compressor. So, uh, and how how long do you think it'll take you to do the fan? If they oh, say it? the fan is, uh, it's all all it is just plug in. You just plug it in. Yeah. Oh, so you just unplug it yeah, and plug up unplug, another one. Unplug it and slide it out and plug the other one in. Oh, is that like two minutes? Yeah. Two minutes with two, 260, what did I read? Condenser fan motor, 268, 39. How much is the fan, though? The fan, about $25, $30. That ain't bad. Yeah. Um, that ain't bad. I appreciate everybody that's been in the chat tuning in. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Any final thoughts, Mike? Uh, I'm going to show one thing. Uh, Karen, it's all love, Karen. I see you in the chat. Yep, good live stream. People can see how to find the problem of an appliance and figure out how to fix them. Absolutely. That's the whole point of, of this live stream. Again, it is something a little bit more advanced, but I did want to equip people uh, to let you know that, hey, you come to appliance school, uh, you go out, start your own appliance repair business, you like what you're doing. And if you want to scale it up and do uh, more uh, advanced stuff, uh, you know, this is just showing you what else is possible if you want to do it. But again, if you're just happy with a six figure appliance repair business, and you never want to fool with this. Uh, just like somebody said earlier in the comments, they wouldn't even mess with it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Th this is 100 percent a choice. Yeah. This is not going to hinder you from making six figures. But I like to give you guys the option. Yeah. Uh, somebody said people won't pay the prices that, uh, in the blue book. This is one. Can we cover uh, up name? Yeah. I can say. Uh, uh, yeah. If we, yeah if we can cover up the name and the account number. OK. So, uh, what happened? This one right here was a, a GE oven where they changed the bake element. And uh, the bake element, this is an old book of what they say the bake element is. $240.01. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to. Yeah, just for privacy uh, purposes. Yeah, let me get some tape. Yeah, yeah we're going to cover up the account number and the uh, the name of the person. But uh, Mike is going to show you the uh, the check uh, because that is a good point. Some people think that um people won't pay this price. And then uh, if you run into that problem, then you're not marketing properly. You're not marketing to the right people. Um. For your service, if you're gonna use blue book prices. Now, if you want to be dirt cheap and charge them a dollar more than what the part costs, you'll go out of business. But you will have a lot of business uh, for that week or so before you uh, go bankrupt. So, um, Mike is just taping up the check just for uh, just out of respect uh, for for who wrote it. So, um, okay. So now the new price of it is two forty three, and uh, I think they can see that they can see it. And yeah, there too. you go, and they 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 paying it. Yep. So uh, there's an actual check from a customer. So yeah. they will play. Uh, they will pay blue book prices, you guys. Yeah. So don't think that hey, this is too high. Um, what I want people to understand is that uh, don't think that your consumers are a hundred percent like you. Maybe right. you say I wouldn't pay yeah. that much. Well, hey, does that mean that you wouldn't take that much money from somebody if they were willing to pay you uh, that much money to do that job? 
um, because it is possible. You know, I appreciate that, Mike. You actually showing them a check from a customer, yeah, so they know people are actually doing that. Yeah, what happened? They're happy to pay that because what happened? That guy, he has rental property. And his rental calls and the oven is messed up. He doesn't want to have to go out there uh, and take his time fixing that. He wanted to pay the call up. We go out and fix it, take care of everything. He just sent us the check. He had cool, cool. Uh, and the rental happened. Run through the chat. I wasn't mean though. I meant for you to see it. That's what I didn't do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I appreciate you both, and I really appreciate you both. I'm moving uh, out. Winner for nineteen. <laughs> Uh, Mike, man, you 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 getting people to move out? They state, Mike. Oh. Uh, I missed it, JT. What's the blue book? This is a, uh, uh, it's available now online, but Mike still has a uh, the old school version, and it's basically the industry standard prices. Uh, so you can go online and for uh, did you say for every uh skill trade there's a blue book? Yeah, use it for every skill trade. There's a blue book. Like, okay. The same thing. We go get your car fixed and the auto mechanic pull out the uh, price book. That's the same thing. They make them for all skill trades. <laughs> Uh, electrical plumbing, HVAC, everything. Yep. So, yeah, and those are the industry standard prices. And Mike showed you people will pay that price. If you don't believe people will pay that price, then you might think that your customers are you um, and, and they're not. Or if you're marketing to you, then you shouldn't, you either shouldn't be marketing to you or uh, you shouldn't be charging blue book prices. But it's like you're losing money uh, if, if everybody else is charging industry standards. And you and you trying to uh, undercut people to steal business. And Mike has a whole video on his channel about that as well. Why? Uh, why you might think that that's gonna get you a, a ton of customers. That is not the formula for success if you want to have longevity. And again, this is somebody that's been doing it almost twenty years. Yeah. We, we, so uh, that's what the uh, blue book is. Yeah. For uh, uh, season uh, season entrepreneurs and season uh, skill tradesmen that have been in the business for a while, we uh, we see new guys come in and. $40 service calls and we see them come in and they think they making it in about two or three months. They catch us up with them and they out. They out mm -hmm. all the time. And and also the warranty companies know that too. That's why they love to get new companies and get them to actually do their warranty work. And they love it because they know they can get you to do it for $40 and they know uh, after about a month or two, you're going to be gone because you're not going to be able to uh, earn a living. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any more questions I got? Is it possible to fix dryers and no other appliances. Dryers and no other. Appliances. No, uh, I think I think they said washers, fix dryers. Yeah, they said is it possible to just fix dryers and no other appliances? Yeah, dryers. Uh, yeah. Usually you're gonna want to do uh do laundry, uh, washer and dryer. You can do that um, if you want to just stay in the laundry business. And uh, a lot of people who do that, they just go to the laundry mat, they go to dry cleaners. And they go to houses. What, what Sears and some of the bigger companies started doing, they started just uh, making people specialize. So what happened when I worked at Sears when I was in college, uh, what they would do, they would let me train on everything. So I would do washers, dryers, refrigerators, dishwashers, the whole suite. But what would happen, they found out these, after these technicians got skilled, they left and started their own company. So what they started to do then is just say, okay, you just going to fix washers and dryers. You're going to do just cooking. So you'll just do ovens and microwaves. And then they have one other person just do refrigeration. So what happened, because you didn't have the whole suite, it made people be afraid to actually go out and do it on their own because they said, I only can do one thing. So, uh, but yeah, you can yeah. earn And a follow-up question was, yeah, does it make sense to do that? But you uh, kind of touched on that. Yeah, you, 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 you can do that if you want to. But if you just be, be mindful, if you do do that, you're going to be leaving a whole lot of money on the table. Because a lot of times when you go to somebody's house, uh, they they don't wait till they have one thing to break. They wait till two or three things break. And they say, hey, uh, you come fix my washer. And then they say my refrigerator, ice maker. So they have two or three things in there to break. Uh, they usually can can go with the ice maker not working. But now that the dryer or the washer broke, they say, well, let's go ahead and get everything fixed. It's coming out. Yep. And, and in case you don't know, like if, and I don't know, you know, the context behind that question, but this by far is the hardest repair. You don't ever do it. Yeah. 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 So don't think that a washing machine, a dryer, a cell phone is as hard to do as a compressor job. Because just like Mike said, uh, I've seen Mike fix a whole lot of stuff. And this is by far the hardest thing that he's fixed. So you can make a great living without doing, you know, this much work. Uh, uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, what about Super Chat, didn't it? Yeah, shout out winner for 19. I like that. Uh, yeah, Where $10 dollars Super Chat. Yeah. Appreciate that. Do y'all like these uh, live streams or fixing stuff? 
I, I like to do them live because, like I said, I want to show y'all exactly how it goes. I want nobody to think that uh, we're trying to stage anything. Um, yeah, you can't edit this. Can't right? edit so, it. Yeah, so, yeah, so we're the problem. Yeah, yeah you can see every day exactly how it happens. So, if y'all like this, I, I, I do more of them. Yeah. yeah. We got somebody said, love the live stream. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, did you do a show on fixing washing machines yet? Yep, yep. I have one on my channel. I'm not sure if Mike has one on his channel yet. No, but uh, probably teaching not. The... Probably not. But uh, uh, I have several of them I've recorded, but I just haven't edited them. So okay, yeah. All right. So I'll help Mike get those uh, edited. And now on my channel, I have one uh, where he's actually. Uh, if you don't know, Mike also teaches high school kids how to do this work, pays them to learn, and gives them the trade. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mike does. Mike does a great community service. Uh, with the whole appliance mm -hmm. repair, he really pays it forward. That's why I got a lot of respect and admire what he does. Um, let me see what else. What else? Again, went up for a shout out to Super Chat. Like, uh, I never asked for Super Chats, yeah. but I'm super grateful. <laughs> for but I see some people in live stream ask for them back to back, so it really means a lot, man. I appreciate uh, the love uh, for that. Love these live streams, yeah. Uh, yes, when I get a chance to watch. Uh, yes, yes. So people saying, yeah, like, uh, even though the camera angles might be a little funky because we are using a, a, a computer and I'll show you guys real quick, uh, what that looks like. So, so, uh, this is what we see. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, nope. Maybe if I flip it. Yeah. This is what we see. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of hard when I'm on the other side trying to play cameraman. I appreciate y'all uh, liking these live chats. So yeah, so so far everybody's saying yeah, great. Okay. I'll learn dryers and washing machines. Uh, Chris Perry, Winsboro, South Carolina. Appreciate you. Appreciate Steve for being here. Uh, anything else, Mike? Before we get out of here? Um, nah, that's it. That's All good. right, man. Appreciate everybody for your time. We've been here almost two hours. Hit that like button if you haven't done so already. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. That was good.